Mexican journalist Jaime Maussan, who has recently been the driving force behind the Nazca mummy reveals of recent memory, has been attacking Ryan Graves, a Navy pilot who testified before Congress last summer about his experiences with UFOs. Let's dive in and see what this is all about. If you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. I put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And please hit that like button, vetters. That really helps out the videos. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below. What do you think about these Nazca mummies, Jaime Mausson, Ryan Graves, especially Jaime Mausson sort of attacking Ryan Graves? Let's dive in. All right, so... Let's start. We've got a bunch of clips to show here. All right. So let's just start with the first one. Shots fired. And then we'll go from there. It says right here, I will demonstrate in the coming days that you were informed and that your attitude is rather cowardly. Who instilled fear in you? Jaime Mauzon says he has found footage showing Ryan Graves knew the Nazca alien mummies were going to be shown at the Mexican UFO hearing and raised no objection. So the issue is, is that Ryan Graves, after the hearing in September of last year, basically, right, when they presented it to Mexican Congress and Nazca mummies, he was not happy about it, right? And so Jaime Mausona is saying, hey, I told you about it beforehand, and you didn't have any problem with it. Then afterwards, you complained about it. That's essentially what's going on. So let's go through the story here. Uh, aquí Ryan Graves dice, en la última parte dice, It's él es el que está diciendo que esa no es tecnología, que él haya visto, que él conozca, que es algo totalmente fuera de, de lo convencional. Hasta el momento nadie ha podido determinar cuál es el origen de estos, pero nuevamente se vuelve a burlar de los Little Green Men, entonces, de los pequeños hombrecitos verdes. Entonces, Ryan, ¿qué es lo que tú crees? ¿Quién crees que maneja esa tecnología? Yo le diría a mi amigo Ryan que se deje de burlar de la posibilidad de que haya seres extraterrestres detrás de esta tecnología. Porque no hay otra explicación, Ryan. Si bien saliste corriendo de aquí de México después de la primera audiencia porque se presentaron cuerpos, cuerpos que yo tengo el video donde te, te dije que esto iba a ocurrir. Afortunadamente hemos encontrado el video donde te lo comunico y tú no tuviste ningún tipo de, eh, pues, eh, de... ¿Cortesía? No, 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 no. Eh, no tuviste ningún tipo de comentario en ese sentido, de que no querer participar o algo así. Ya después, cuando salimos del Congreso, ibas muy contento, te había parecido muy bien todo, pero fue de que, puede ser que llegaste a tu hotel, que en la mañana me llamaste para decirme que tenías un problema en casa, ¿sí?, y que te tenías que retirar de manera inmediata, a pesar de que se había preparado un homenaje que iban a hacer los pilotos mexicanos a tu persona por tener el valor de hablar de todo esto. Y entonces saliste corriendo a los Estados Unidos porque no te quisiste relacionar con el caso de los seres tridáctilos de Nazca. Seguramente algún día te vas a arrepentir de eso, Ryan, porque pues realmente yo nunca terminé de entender cuál fue tu actitud o quién fue quien te dijo que salieras corriendo a los Estados Unidos después de asistir a la primera audiencia pública que hubo en México y entonces sí publicar un tuit diciendo que había sido engañado, que yo no te había informado, pero voy a demostrar en los próximos días que sí estuviste informado, sí estuviste informado y que tu actitud es más bien, me parece a mí, cobarde y no sé quién te infundió ese, ese, ese miedo, quizá alguien del Pentágono que te dijo que te iban a quitar tu sueldo, debido a, a, a haber participado en un evento como el que ocurrió en México. Pero el tiempo nos va a poner a cada uno de nosotros en nuestro lugar. Pero tú, deja de burlarte de los Little Green Men, porque posiblemente sean esos seres los que manejan estas naves. Correcto. So, he did call him a coward there, um, and they didn't put that in the translation. Uh, but, but, well, he said the way he was acting was cowardly. Um, about that. So there you go, right? To sum that up, basically, Jaime Mausson is saying, right, um, you, you had no problem at the hearing. I told you about it beforehand. The hearing's fine. You go back to your hotel, then something potentially happens. Because uh, Jaime is saying, Ryan called Jaime and said, hey, I got a problem at home. I got to head back. 
and Jaime's like, okay, even though they had other stuff planned. Um, apparently, Mexican pilots had were going to, you know, do something for him, some special event or something for Ryan Graves, and he skipped out on that before that could happen. Um, so he had an emergency at home, and he got back. Um, then, of course, you know, you do see in interviews, he does put out, Ryan Graves does put out a tweet that I'm going to show you, um, right, kind of dismissing it all. And Jaime's just saying you shouldn't have done that because, you know, the, these things that are flying around are potentially these, you know, little green men, right? So don't laugh at our mummies when you're also talking about UFOs, right? Um, and that's interesting. Shots fired, man, from Jaime Mauson. So did, did Jaime release that video? Yes, I'm going to show that video. This is why I waited to do this video, because I wanted to see if, if Jaime was actually going to produce this other video that he was talking about producing where he tells Ryan Graves. Now, stay tuned, because I'm I'm going to be sticking up for Ryan Graves in this video. I got to be honest. I'm going to be sticking up for Ryan Graves in this video. And nada mal con mis compadres de México, pero para mí fue entendido un poco mal. Y da, hay dos versiones. De este cuento. There's two versions to this story. So let, let's just take a look real quick at what what Ryan Graves was kind of shown without being shown. For the first time, right, with everybody, he gets shown this, right? This is what we're talking about, right? These beings. Remember, this was last September, okay? September 2023. This was shown in Mexico City. And they showed these little beings, right? It was crazy. I saw it too. It was like, wait, what? I think I live streamed this. I'm sure I can't remember. And there you are, right? Those are the mummies. That's what we're talking about. Little bitty things. Right? We've all seen that. Again, they say these things are a thousand year old aliens, basically. Or if not aliens, you know, non-human. Another species of, of human, something, I don't know. Anyway, this is the tweet that Jaime is talking about that Ryan put out after the fact, okay? After that hearing, after this video I just showed you right here, he tweets this out. After the U.S. Congressional UFO hearing, I accepted an invitation to testify before the Mexican Congress, hoping to keep up the momentum of government interest in pilot experiences with UAP. Unfortunately, yesterday's demonstration... It's the video I just showed you of the mummies. It was a huge step backwards for this issue. My testimony centered on sharing my experience in the UAP reports I hear from commercial and military air crew through ASA's witness program. I will continue to raise awareness of UAP as an urgent matter of aerospace safety, national security, and science, but I am deeply disappointed by this unsubstantiated stunt. That's interesting. Um, so that's the tweet. Okay. And look, it is kind of interesting that, you you know, Ryan will go testify just to, just to stick up for Jaime a little bit here. Okay. Just to be objective. It is interesting to go testify before Congress, right? Talk about dead aliens, bodies, um, you know, the stuff that, that, um, David Grush was saying right next to Ryan Graves. Right, not stuff necessarily that Ryan Graves testified, but in the same sort of setting, right? Next to Ryan Graves, you had David Grush talking about dead alien pilots, you know, humans being killed from UFOs and aliens, all right? Us reverse engineering craft. Um, go down the countless claims that were made. I mean, Mexico sort of did the same thing and, and then presented actual bodies. So, David Grush can talk about the bodies, but then Jaime Mauson isn't allowed to present something to even look at. At least it's something to dismiss. I'm just saying. So just to be fair to the whole situation there, but again, from Ryan Graves' side, I can understand his mentality. He's going down to testify, not thinking there's going to be any props, and then, you know, that gets charted out. He has no way to verify it, nothing to, you know, substantiate it but to be fair again to the whole thing ryan graves had nothing to substantiate david grush's claims that he was making right next to him 
right? Same thing. So I don't know. What do y'all think in the comments? Now, what I think is getting misunderstood and why I want to stick up for Ryan Graves is Jaime sort of attacking Ryan afterwards about it. I don't think that's necessary or cool because here's the video that Jaime is talking about that supposedly, um, you know, where he's told about this, right? So evidence of Ryan Graves being informed of the Nazca mummies ahead of the Congress, right? So the stunt that he talks about in his tweet, apparently he knew about it. Well, let's see if that's true. Uh, biological remains in the hospital. We found these remains in Peru in 2021. They've been investigated since then. And now we have the DNA. Uh, he's telling me about the mummies since I think 2013. They've been investigated, right? So he is talking to them about these mummies. The specialist from the Navy, that's Tony. He's the head of the scientific department of the Navy. He's the top, top, top scientist of the Navy. Uh, he investigated. He was also the forensic expert for the Navy for many years now. He's not, but he's above that. Uh, he's the one who's going to talk about these creatures that were alive a thousand years ago. These were not from a crash. They are, they live with people and they were buried in a second. We'll back people, that up. They live with people not from a crash. They are, they live with people I don't know why and they not. were buried in a sacred place in Peru. And then we finally, the DNA is up in the cloud, in the internet, any scientific organization will be able to investigate. It's all you can do, right? Yes, it's all you can do. And present them, and it's physical evidence. Whoever that says that is not true, they are right there, prove it. Right? Okay. It's a good, it, this is a chance to do this. You know what I mean? And it's going to be very powerful. All right, so look, let's be fair to the whole situation. Nowhere in this clip does Jaime say, hey, I'm going to be showing these creatures at the hearing present. I mean, he's kind of saying that, but not really. He's not saying the actual bodies are going to come out. So I think maybe that's what Ryan misunderstood. Jaime has a thick accent. Things can get lost in translation. You're behind the scenes, right? You're behind getting ready to go out. So you're just kind of free talking with people. And it's just kind of like, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, you know, it's just small talk. When someone tells you something, yeah, hey, what else can you do? You know, that's all you can do, right? It kind of just sounds like Ryan's just kind of going along with things. Doesn't really, uh, maybe not really fully understanding what's being told to him. Um, so just to be fair to Ryan there, right? And I don't think Jaime, I don't think this is the mic drop Jaime thinks it is, right? Granted, he is telling them some details about these creatures, and saying that the inf DNA information is online. People can research it, right? look into it and Ryan's like, yeah, I mean, what else can you do? Look into it. Right. But it's not really specific in this video of, Hey man, we're going to cart, you know, we're going to show these inside. Just be aware. It's probably going to shock everybody just so you know that this is going to happen. That would have been a better conversation. Hey man, don't want you to be shocked by this. We're going to be bringing out these bodies. You're going to see them, you know, we're bringing them out in these cases. He should have taken Ryan Graves behind the scenes in a warehouse and showed it to him privately and have video of that, get his reaction. That would have been better, right? Then Ryan Graves is fully aware these are going out and maybe he then doesn't want to sit for something like that, you know? I, I think that, to be fair to Ryan Graves, he, he, he should be told everything that's going to happen if he's there to testify. Surprises, like, if, if, if that was considered a surprise to him, I don't think that's cool. So I can understand, right, his reaction to thinking it's a stunt and not really the right direction to go, right? And I think that's more what the issue is. It's like, hey, guys, you just didn't tell me this is what you were going to do. Yeah, you told me about the creatures, but I didn't know you're going to prop them out in these boxes and show them, and that be the huge thing that everyone's going to want to talk about, right? Because afterwards, people wanted to do interviews with Ryan Graves, and he kept saying, not in front of those mummies. I'll talk to you, but don't put me, you know, with the mummies in the background. 
right? To add, basically, like he would be endorsing it, right? And essentially, that's kind of what they were trying to do. Maybe a little bit, Jaime and his crew. Maybe people there were thinking, sort of credibility by association, right? By ha presenting the Nazca mummies at the same hearing that Ryan Graves testified at, right? It now becomes a different could add some legitimacy there, especially for non-English speaking, right? Maybe some Latin American country, they, they would see that as, oh, Ryan Gra the American, Ryan Graves is there, the pilot who testified before American Congress. He's here. He testified the same thing. It must be legit, right? So there could have been a little bit of that. Jaime trying to, you know, you know, and Ryan Graves isn't calling Jaime out like that, right? He, he was very diplomatic in his response, very professional. And I think Jaime, and that's kind of Jaime's thing, so whatever. But he's being a little saucy, a little spicy, you know, about it. It sounds, again, just like misunderstandings from both sides here. That's what it sounds like to me. Let's watch a couple more clips. All right, this is about the Nazca mummies and Ryan and all that st sort of stuff. Oh, come on now. Uh, what's going on here? Okay. Apparently. <laughs> This is important. This is another country taking the initiative and bringing people together in a professional setting and talking about the UFO problem. Or UAP or Penny are real, observed, and not committed by credible sources, yet we know very little about them. Thanks to efforts like today, we are starting to see that change. Then there was this moment. And you saw this unveiling. It's all, like I said, I'm still processing it a bit, but, um, yeah, let's, maybe we can, I'll circle back on that one at some point. Um, to surprise the attendees with something that has not been scientifically substantiated in any way. That was the same seat that Ryan Graves was sitting in before when Highmate spoke to him. Did you notice that? Small little detail, but that's interesting. For me, it was almost like I was being pranked in a sense. <laughs> uh, I just kind of disbelief. I had no indication that that would be brought out in the hearing at, at that level. And so for me, it was a bit of shock and disbelief and just disappointment all happening at once. Yeah, I don't think Ryan is lying about that. You see that? He, he just that's not the type of guy he has shown himself to be for the last few years since he's been out. Regardless of what you think of if what he saw or not is alien tech or whatever, you know, him as a person, how Ryan has conducted himself in his in his interviews, in his podcasts on Merge online, on Twitter, countless interviews. I mean, the guy presents himself so professional. Right. He's such a credible person. So when he says that he didn't know about like, I believe him. I mean, a thousand percent, I believe the guy, right? And again, I think it's just misunderstanding. I don't think Jaime fully explained, in that clip that he showed, there was a mic drop. I don't think Jaime fully explained what was exactly going to go down. I think he said it kind of quick. Again, you're behind the scenes and doesn't really go over it because there's no way Ryan wouldn't have known, you know, wouldn't have inquired further if he knew that that was going to happen. He would have asked more questions. What's going on? You know, but he, it sounds like I believe him when he says he had no idea. So again, Jaime talking about the creatures to him is different than saying, hey, 
these creatures are going out that, that they're just it's two different things but again i think it's just a misunderstanding across the board a little bit of language barrier misunderstanding you know a, a lot of assumptions um and again some sort of credibility by proxy right from jaime and his team i think and maybe other people PR people that are working, right? Like, let's get Ryan here, but let's not tell him about the mummies. He's probably not going to come down if we tell him about that. Or just tell him they're going to talk about these mummies. Whatever. Right? One thing is to then bring them out. But at the end of the day, that's kind of what you want to bring them out. So, I don't know. And let's be real. At the same time, we are talking about aliens and UFOs and, like, what makes one thing ridiculous and another not. That's what's hard for me to wrap my brain around in this topic is people will completely laugh at something like the Nazca mummies. And then and I'm not joking in the same breath, turn and be like interdimensional time traveling beings. Let's talk about that. Bigfoot for Mars, remote viewing, telekinesis, psychic powers, right? That's CE5 contact with alien, but not the Nazca mummies. That's ridiculous. Right. So, again, it's a it's an interesting take to have. But if we're being real, if E.T. is a real t subject, and of course, I think it is. Right. Then there are you then there are going to be hoaxes and bullshit. Right. That you've got to scrape away to get to the true E.T. stories, the true stories about the phenomena. Right. Hence vetted. Right. It's a big part of what vetted is. We we think there is something going on here, vetted, right? Me personally, right? But in order for me to really get to know what that is, we got to push aside a lot of these BS stories. Is the Nazca mummies one of these stories? Is the David Grush testimony one of the stories, right? Like, it's hard to tell. Now, David Grush, Ryan Graves, Commander David Fravor testifying before Congress is very powerful for me you know, help me move the needle a lot. Again, I find those guys super credible. So, but I'm not as upset as a lot of people are about Jaime presenting those mummies at the Congress. I mean, that's what you got to do. Let people, instead of just talking about you got these things, you're like, here they are. Here's what we are saying are aliens. Look at it. You can laugh all you want, but at the end of the day, they're giving you something to laugh about rather than just a story that you never get the evidence from to even have a chance to laugh at, right? It's like the whole Jaws theory, right? Steven Spielberg shooting Jaws. Instead of showing the shark so much, your, your imagination will fill it in better than, than he could ever do showing it to you. So the story or the thought of it is much more enticing and much you will fill that out more in your brain, in your imagination. You know, so anyway, I just, you know, I think there's a big misunderstanding. That, that's what I think. But I believe Ryan Graves when he says 100% when he says he did not know about what's going on. He was taken aback. That was shocking to him. I think any normal person could understand that. And I can, again, can understand some of Jaime's side, right? You, you have this event, too, that the Mexican pilots have put on wanting to probably celebrate Ryan Graves have nothing to do with this Nazca mummy thing. You know, Ryan, Ryan probably should have gone to that. Maybe he didn't know about it, but I, I just don't see him being like that. You know what I mean? So he probably didn't know about that, you know, but I get, he wants to get out of town. He doesn't want to then be used maybe as a prop around town. Hey, let's take him here. Take him there. We'll photograph him. It's going to add validity to all this. You know, there's a part of that, too, that maybe he's worried about that and he didn't want to get used. And I'm not saying that's what was happening, but there could be some of that. It could be innocent. You know, we're all trying to work together sort of scenario. What's the deal? We're all on the same team here. So anyway, this is the last uh, little clip on the play of Jaime. Uh, it says Jaime explains what happened behind the scenes in Mexico with Lieutenant Mar Ryan Grace. And this came out yesterday. All right. So we're, we're going to sum it up with this. Eso será más adelante. Mire, por lo pronto le quiero presentar algo que de lo que le hablé la semana pasada, Ryan Graves, 
un hombre al que respeto, un piloto de combate, pero que, pues, eh, él fue invitado a México, precisamente porque uno de los puntos que se estaba tratando era la regularización, la aceptación del fenómeno UAP en México, en, la, eh, en, las, en las leyes, que se reconociera su existencia y, por tanto, la, reconocer un fenómeno que va más allá de la comprensión. Entonces, él vino gustoso. En ese, en el, desde que yo lo invité <coughs> hasta que vino, eh, pues, eh, pasaron muchas cosas. Eh, una de las posibilidades fue de que al descubrir nosotros que había cuerpos en México, nosotros no lo sabíamos. Bueno, lo habíamos sabido unos meses antes, pero no, nosotros no estuvimos involucrados cuando esto ocurrió, ¿no? Hasta después nos enteramos, que hicimos, vimos una gran oportunidad, dado que la presentación de David Grosch, la invitación de Graves fue incluso antes del 26 de julio, fue desde el mes de junio o mayo. Oh, that's en el caso de Grosch, que habló de cuerpos recuperados y que habló de naves, y sabíamos de la resistencia que iba a tener el Pentágono, ahora es evidente, pues nosotros quisimos presentar cuerpos verdaderos. Y luego dijo Ryan Graves que nadie le avisó, nadie le dijo nada. Yo desde la tarde anterior le di, le di a todos los eh, gentes que participaron, les dije, él llegó mucho más tarde porque su avión se retrasó. Sin embargo, en la mañana a primera hora se le informó si él no hubiera querido participar, se hubiera podido retractar y, y ya, punto. Sin embargo, él fue informado, él salió muy contento de la conferencia y al día siguiente me pide que tiene que salir de México urgente, le compro un boleto adicional a mi costo, de primera clase a mi costo, para que él se pudiera ir rápidamente a un problema que tenía en su casa, de acuerdo a lo que él me dijo a mí. Y luego llegando allá, lanza un tuit diciendo que él no tiene nada que ver, que nadie le avisó, que bla, 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 bla. Un verdadero acto de cobardía. De cobardía. Yo sabía que se lo había informado, pero pues no tenía cómo demostrarlo. Hasta que se me acercaron <coughs> unos compañeros que habían grabado el momento en que yo le informo al señor Graves lo que iba a ocurrir, cómo iba a ocurrir. Y él pues eh, estaba muy tranquilo y muy contento de que esto fuera así. Resulta evidente que cuando llega en la noche a su hotel, a su o a su celular, le llama del pantalón, le dicen, oye, tú no puedes participar en eso, tú no puedes darle validez a esto, tú no sé, nada. y él se va corriendo, 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 porque le dieron unas nalgadas y se fue. ¿Mm? Entonces, para los que dudan, que yo le informé, aquí ya tengo este segmento, lo hemos traducido al español, si me permiten ustedes al concluir, lo voy a presentar también en inglés, para los que no entiendan, para que quede muy claro. Yo sé que muchos los van a subir esto a, a internet, a las redes sociales. Háganlo, no hay ningún problema para que todo el mundo se entere. Vamos entonces con Ryan Graves. So again, in that clip that he showed, nothing against Jaime, I'm just saying, it does not show that Ryan Graves is properly informed of what's going on and what's going to happen. So it sounds like Jaime may have given some big presentation to everyone there that that was going to happen. And Ryan was late because of his flight. And so he got this other little, he got told another way. Again, I think he was, didn't realize the bodies were going to come out. I think they probably thought they were going to present the findings of the, st of the stuff, but not the actual bodies. And again, that took over the entire hearing. You know? Nobody wanted to know anything past that. <laughs> Let's be real. Nobody even remembers Ryan Graves' testimony. It was all about those Nazca mummies. So anyway, look, um, there's going to be another on, uh, when is it? April 4th, okay, in the morning. There, there's going to be another presentation of some more mummies. All right. And, um, you know, so they're going to keep going with this. I'm sure I'm going to live stream it. So, you know, join me. Join me for that. That's going to be a, a much earlier than normal than we normally do. But, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to um, live stream that. All right. So. Should be interesting. For sure. 
the last live stream they did did not go well. So hopefully they get those technical difficulties. I mean, it's unwatchable, right? So hopefully they get the technical difficulties figured out and whatever, we can have an interesting live stream. But there you go. So what do y'all think in the comments? Jaime calling Ryan Graves cowardly, right, for doing that. Um, I don't think that's cool, Jaime. I don't think that's cool um, at all, right? I think reaching out diplomatically and trying to, behind the scenes, work out that misunderstanding instead of calling him out like this. Like, who's going to want to come testify now down in Mexico? Like, ¿me entiendes? O sea, Jaime, madre mía, tío. Like, it's, it's not a good look, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't think that's cool to call him out like that, especially Ryan Graves of all people. Again, Ryan Graves, right? Like the most professional, diplomatic, credible guy talking about this almost, right? Like, let's be real. Like, I, it, it looks silly coming from Jaime saying that, right? It looks, it's, he sounds silly saying that about Ryan Graves. So anyway. Again, that mic drop clip that he showed doesn't show him being informed like he says it is, you know. So anyway, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Curious what everyone's going to say. NASCAR mummies, Ryan Graves, Jaime Mousson. Uh, this April 4th thing we got coming up, you know. So a couple days. What is that, Thursday? Yeah. Thursday live stream. Join me. We'll, we'll do this thing with the NASCAR mummies again. The last one was a blast. Uh, regardless if it went wrong, I had a great time chatting with everybody and whatever. I think I had a little whiskey. Probably do that again, I guess, depending on how early it is. But anyway. All right. We'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. Um, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I almost forgot that. Uh, yeah. All right, y'all. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, every day is a gift. Peace.